Welcome back. This is Scorecard on City TV. My name is Daniel Cranting. Let me introduce my guest. Emmanuel Nubo is here with me as well as Susu Graham. Hi, guys. How are you doing? We're doing, doing great. It's been a great weekend of sports in action. Oh, yeah. Your pick? Arsenal versus Chelsea. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there, Susu. I have to agree. <laughs> very for, fun. For me, it's been the athletics. It's been the athletics. Um, yes, uh, Ghana's men didn't win a medal, but they were absolutely brilliant. In fact, the action throughout the weekend was just top-notch. And um, look, if you missed it, that's why the show is for you. Catch up with all the action that happened. Of course, you can keep your messages coming in, in the WhatsApp line 05 and And then hashtag scorecard on Twitter and I'll read all your messages. But let's go straight into the action and we'll start with the men's 4 by 100 meter race. It was it happened, I think, late last or late, uh, early this morning, in fact, dawn. Um, depending on where you are, late last night, if you are not in Ghana, in some parts of um, the world. In, but in Ghana, it happened early this morning there. Um, Team Ghana made the final um, against All Odds. A brilliant run in the heat to book their place in the final. But they fell just a bit too short for the medals. Canada upset USA. And then um, Jamaica also missed out um, on a medal. Yes, so um, an anticlimax for the USA team. They were expected to win it. Come on, you can't have no allows. You can't have uh, Breezy, you talk about um, Christian Coleman. And then you go out in a race and are upset by the Canadians. Um, it's very interesting because the grass has suffered with COVID. He's suffered with injuries. But some way, somehow, every time these things happen to him, he still manages to get a, a medal. He failed to make the 100-meter final in the individuals. But he comes out and he produces a fantastic ankle leg to push Canada to the gold medal there. Disappointing also for Jamaica. They missed out on the medal. But Team Ghana, um, they did absolutely well. You saw the last leg from uh, Joseph Paul Amwa. In fact, he ran the fastest um, ankle leg during the heats, and he was top five in the fastest um, ankle leg in the final also. Fantastic guy, fantastic race, guys. Um, I, I, I was super impressed by Team Ghana. I think I said on the show on Friday that yeah. we should just better our time. I wasn't expecting them to qualify third because that was one of the fastest heats. They had USA in their heat. They had, I think, Britain to in their yeah. heat. So they did really well to place third. And then in the final, they did extremely well. I think that's the national record mm -hmm. now. They yeah. placed fifth behind USA, behind Canada, behind Great Britain, and behind Jamaica. So if it, it looks like with, with little or no support from our authorities and all that, they've been able to place fifth on the world stage. It showed that if, if we support them well and they are given one or two things, they can challenge for honest. And I'm really impressed by what they did with little or no support from from the authority, sadly. So, so we talk about performing when it matters most. And um, we, you, you can't really ask anything much from them or anything more from them considering what they put. Their national record in the final. Everybody outran themselves and gave their best. And if you look at who they lost to in the USA, Canada, um, Jamaica and Great Britain, these are literally the top four powerhouses in sprint. So after that, then came Ghana. So Ghana were the best amongst the rest. You look at the South African team that looked very impressive on paper. You look at some others. You look at uh, Japan. I don't think yeah, Japan, Japan even made the, yeah, yeah. The, the final. You look at France who were DQ'd at the end, but Ghana still passed them basically. No, but but it's, it was really impressive. Yeah, it is very, and like you said, the countries that beat them, it's like if you go to the World Cup and you lose to Brazil, yeah. there's no shame in that because they are Brazil, you know. So losing to these countries in a really like this, it just shows that a really team, there's a lot of potential. They've done very well. Now, I want to hope to see that some of this really power, you know, they can bring to the individuals and make a name for each of themselves because they've done so well. I'm so proud of them. I also want to give a special, a special shout out to my second country, Canada, you know. <laughs> so I'm very, I'm very happy for them, you know. So, but yeah, it's really, honestly, the Ghanaians have tried. We knew that there really was where we could, we could make a splash. And mm -hmm. I say, even though we didn't, make, didn't medal, we made a splash. It was a very impressive performance, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. You know what? You know what? Look, I, I, I told myself I'll come and see it on the show. You know what annoyed me? If you watch the race, and I think the replay will capture it. If you watch the race, Canada first, they put USA second, and then they put Ghana third. So we we're all jubilating because yes, we could see that we didn't finish third. But no, you see the complexities of the the release. You don't know who was DQ'd. You don't know what yeah, happened. Exactly. But if you can watch it in your the, the bottom left corner, you see it come up. So they put G Canada, Canada, they put USA, and then Ghana oh, came. Yeah, I saw it, I saw so we're all it. celebrating only for them to change it and put us in fifth. And this is the second time they are doing this in in the. Um, at this particular championship. Because that's the same thing that happened to Azamati in his heat. They put Azamati <laughs> yeah. in third, only for them to go and do a review and put him in fourth. You can't be
be playing with this nation like that. Too. You can't be playing with our emotions like that. Because come on, we, uh, we stayed I mean, up. I we mean, stayed up 2 a.m. to watch this race. <laughs> and then we shout and we are jubilating at 2 a.m. We are waking up our neighbors only for the thing to be reviewed and then we are in faith. What athletics? Be very careful. We, can't, we don't, we don't we like this. We can't celebrate faith. I mean, no, we can't celebrate faith. But you see, for a country like more. Ghana, come on, Charlie. You can't tease when us was, with when was the, last the prospect of a medal. medal at the World Championships. I think 2000. Six or it's, something? It's, it's, it's been a while. It's, it's been, been a while. In fact, world, I, 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 I doubt. I think we'll have to go back, back, back. But look, world, let, you can't be joking with us like that. Please, <laughs> next time, the IT guys, make sure you get it right. <laughs> Just get it right. Because I was screaming at 2 a.m. I woke up people and only for them to go, why are you screaming now? We finished fit. Meanwhile, the thing came and we finished. Th we don't like that. But let's move on. Let's talk about the 100 meter, um, 4 by 100 meter relays, the women's. Um, it was, of course, America had the hostess in Oregon. They upset Jamaica. Jamaica had the likes of Sherika J um, Jackson. Um, she won the 200 meters. They had Shelly and Prisa Fries who won the um, 100 meters. They had the Olympic champion in Elaine Thompson Hera. But America, the USA, upset them to win that particular gold medal. T.T. Terry, I bet you, if it was 10 meters more, yeah. Sherika Jackson would have closed that gap and probably won. But that's why it's 4 by 100 meters. That's why it's not 4 by 120 meters. And she did the job. TT Terry for the USA, the anchor leg, holding on just by a thread to win gold for USA. But that was a very interesting race. Really close. It was, it was really close getting to the end. As you said, if, it was, if the track was extended 10 meters, mm. I think Sherika Jackson would have, would have passed it. But I think USA really came, they meant business for this athletic championship. They, they did a clean sweep in, I think, the 100, mm -hmm. the 200. So that's for the men's side and the women's side too, they showed up. So they really meant to, to put a marker on this and I'm really impressed. That was a really strong finish. If Considering you how like. Jamaica has tormented them in the previous years. But when I was watching this, what came to mind was, if you know athletics, you remember Lauren Williams. She's the one who dropped the baton in Athens 2004. Mm -hmm. She dropped the baton again in Beijing 2008. And for USA to beat Jamaica in a relay, you, you really have to go back in history. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it doesn't of, often happen, especially the women who tend to drop their batons almost every time. But thankfully, this time <laughs> it didn't happen and they won gold. But let's go to my favorite race of this weekend. It was a 400-meter uh, hurdles. It had the Olympic champion in Dalila Mohammed, the world champion, uh, no, the former world champion in, or yes, in Dalila Mohammed, the Olympic champion in Sydney, uh, McLaughlin, and then the second fastest woman of all time in Femke Ball, the three of them went into that race, and Sydney McLaughlin, an absolutely brilliant run, smashed the world record, and she's now both world and Olympic champion. Sydney McLaughlin. And look, just to put things into context, the times before, in fact, if you consider their individual personal best, these are the three fastest women of all time under this, in fact, in this particular event. If you compare their times, it was so close. So for her to absolutely obliterate them, the way you saw just shows you how good she is because the two behind her are second and third fastest women in history. So that was how good she ran. But what concerns me is her demeanor after she wins. The same thing in the Olympics. When she won it, if you caught the race after, you don't know she's the winner. She's just walking around <laughs> like, okay, another day in the office. <laughs> she should celebrate I, I, more. I like people like that. They make it look, they make it look easy. Oh. Look, no, no. did you see her face? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You've smashed the world record and you are just looking at the time and you are looking at the crowd like, okay, what is happening? <laughs> Maybe she herself was stunned by Goodness the performance. Me. I mean, it's similar to the Van Niekerk world record breaking mm -hmm. performance mm -hmm. where he ran his own race and he was, the gap was like between earth and heaven. That, that wide. He just ran his own race and then finished it. And that was a really impressive run. I mean, it's almost a second shot of the yeah. record. The gap. Fantastic. <laughs> She's like, oh, okay, it's just another day in the office. Let's go. Mad. Maybe if it was closer, I should have celebrated because it's like, it would have been, it would have been like a hard race, you know. Like if she had just had to just pass the person at the last one, maybe yeah. she would be like, ah, but <laughs> I think it was just, it seemed too easy. Just like, oh, okay, we finished. Well, where are you people? Oh, yeah, now come in. Yeah. This is crazy. This yeah. is crazy. So in a space of a year, we've seen the men's four, uh, 400 meter hurdle record smashed. And then the women's 400 meter hurdle is also smashed. I always ask myself why those who do these events don't do the 400 flat. Because if you compare the records in both, it's just, right now, what McLaughlin has done is just like a second 
behind the main 400 pretty meter close, record. Pretty so if she goes the flat, I'm very sure if, if you are is, taking is, out is, the hurdles and you is the running technique for hurdles because you mm. know the jumping, then you have to readjust, jump again to readjust. So running the flats is a bit different. So I think that's why they don't do it because I think if you are your body is trained to do a mm -hmm. certain thing yeah. to come to the flats. It might mess you up but, when you have to go. Why would the flat be easier? Yeah, yeah but I'm saying when you have to go back, like switching back and forth yeah. might be the problem. Yeah. So you have to, if you are in a situation, maybe go straight to 400 and stop doing the hurdles because if you are used to just running the 400 streets, when you get to the hurdles, your yeah, muscle memory yeah. can kick in and you forget to jump. Yeah. So it, yeah. it could be it could. a problem. It could. Let's do the 800 meter final now. Um, the goods in this competition or this particular event is David Rudrishaf. Kenya, he's retired, he's done. But another Kenyan is continuing to raise a flag high. Corey, he won the gold in the men's 800 meter final. From one African to another African, let's go to Amuson. Um, Toby Amuson, Nigerian 100 meter hurdles runner. Now, it was just the heat. The final will take place um, later tonight. But it was just the heat. But she set a new African record in the heat 12.40 seconds. Absolutely brilliant. Take a look. Toby Amuson, talk about <laughs> turning up. Just in the heat, and she's already set an African record. But I'm, re I'm guys, I'm really looking forward to the final because it has my favorite in the Puerto Rico's Jasmine Camacho Queen. <laughs> Jasmine Camacho Queen. She's the Olympic champion coming up against Amazon, who's been brilliant form this this yeah, year. I mean, it, was, it should be a contest. I mean, that would be a final to watch because if you after 50 or 60 meters there was no catching there, mm -hmm. she was clear of the track. And if there's there's an Olympic champion in there, you'd want the final to live up to the billing. We don't want to see something like the 400 meter hurdles where there was a huge gap. Let's see some competition so that when they finish their race, they can show some proper expressions. But that was a really impressive run by, by the Nigerian. Very, very impressive. Mean, we should also talk about her not celebrating. If you break an African record, you should also show some. Even know, it's that's a heat, so. It doesn't matter. You broke, <laughs> it's a, broke, it's a no, record. No, no, no but see, you, you can understand it because she's going in to win gold. Yeah. So she runs her own race, fine. She finishes. She's broken an African record. But if you celebrate now, you're going to lose out to the gold. <laughs> It's yeah, an anti-climax. record is a big deal. Oh, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big, but, yeah, but it doesn't come with the medal, so. It, it doesn't. It doesn't, but yeah, the, the, the records will always show. But I honestly feel like we'll see another African record in the final because of the form of Jasmine Camacho Queen. Oh. I like seeing the name. She's an absolute beast. And if Amazon is going to catch her or beat her, she will have to break another record. Because I mean, if you look at Camacho Queen's personal best, it's 12.26. Oh, that's fast. That's very fast. That's fast. That's 0.06 uh, short of the world record, which has stood, I think, since the 70s. So it, it just shows you how good Camacho Queen is and how, how much effort Amazon will have to put in if she wants to catch up with that. But um, let's go to another African. And uh, when you talk about the 5,000 meters in both male, female, you know Kenya and Ethiopia are in the race. And Ethiopian won this time um, in the women's 5,000 meter final. Gudap Sege, Ethiopian, winning the women's 5,000 meters. Any surprises there that an Ethiopian or an East African won it again? No, at all. But I'm, I'm actually super impressed. They are second on the medal table, mm -hmm. if I remember. I mean, if I'm getting it right. And that's really impressive. But that's a challenge to other African countries. Can we do better? Maybe we, we may not be blessed with the long distance running and those things. Yeah. But I think in the sprints, on the track and field and other things, we can, we can get better. But that's a really impressive run. Oh, yeah, looking um, at me. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I think he's, he's right about that. that we have yeah. the potential in the sprints. I mean, you yeah. saw Talu was always fourth, fifth. So there's potential. Yeah. And like we always say, how much support do we get compared to the Americans and the Jamaicans and that kind of stuff? So if we can make it into the... We can have one or two point in the final eight with minimal support. Let's say we actually put in the effort. We actually build the infrastructure. We can go a long way, so... And yep. if we are speaking genetically, these are our people who are there. We are the same. So we should be able to do some. <laughs> there's, there's That's no a difference. very interesting thing. But no difference. Today is the last day of the World Athletics Championship. Today is the last day. The events to look forward to, of course, you always know that in these last days, they do the uh, relay. So tonight, you see the 4x4. Four, um, four four. That's a 4x400 four meter relay for both men and women. Um, America looks like, especially in the women. If you look at their 400 meter team and you look at the fact that I think McLaughlin and Delilah, um, Dalila, I always call it Delilah, <laughs> Dalila Mohammed will be part of that uh, particular team. So you can tell that the Americans are our favorites for that one. And then the 100 meter women's hurdles. That's what I'm personally looking forward to. Yes, I'll close late, but I'll still stay up and watch that one. Amuson versus Jasmine Kamacho Queen. <laughs> Jasmine Kamacho Queen, Olympic champion. I want to see that record broken. I'm tired. Some records have stood for too long. 1970, yeah, 1977 or something like that. Yeah, that's longer. I mean, that's, that's too long. My parents have never even met. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> guys, we'll take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll show you what Arsenal did to Chelsea. The Chelsea fans are saying it's just pre-season. But deep down, they know. Deep down, they know. We'll be back after this break. Welcome back. This is Scorecard on City TV. My name is Daniel Cranton. Just gone by. We're digesting the action from the World Athletics Championships in Oregon over the weekend. Seen some smashing times, some great performances. But now we'll zoom um, into preseason action. Um, we're about three or four weeks into preseason. So by now you can see the real levels of the team or the various teams going into the new season. Chelsea, they were in action against Arsenal. So it's like their first major chest, uh, test off. Um, pre-season. Um, they uh, beat Club America earlier on. Um, they lost on penalties against a team called Charlotte. Then they faced Arsenal. In fact, after the Charlotte game, they said it was just pre-season. They faced Arsenal last night. Um, in fact, last night was brilliant. They faced Arsenal last night and Arsenal, Jesus blessed them first and then three goals followed. Arsenal thumped Chelsea by four goals to nil in a pre-season tie. Arsenal four, Chelsea nil. Um, Chelsea fans say it's just pre-season, but deep down, deep down they know, because everybody played. There's no excuse. <laughs> I saw the best keeper in the world, Mendy was in post. He took all the four, he swallowed, he's full. Guys, 4-0, um, it might just be pre-season, but Arsenal look impressive. They, they look very dangerous heading into the season. Very, very, uh, very, very impressive. And it looks like whoever Ateta has been cooking over the past four years is now simmering and mm -hmm. it's almost ready to be consumed. And Jesus is turning water into wine at Arsenal. I'm telling you. I'm telling look you. at the finish. The, I, 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 I just hope that is, we are not, we are not over anticipating anything. But if this is what they are going to carry into the season, it's really going to. Be, I think they may even finish above Chelsea, because the, you can clearly see that the patterns of play are there. There's movements. There's they're switching from one end to the other. And with the team they started with, it looks like that. I mean, aside Ben White playing right back and yeah. one or two things, that looks like their set team. And there's some form of synergy. I mean, Gabriel Jesus is he's 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 a better player than Lacazette because Lacazette always wanted to be central, but he's moving, so he's splitting your defense and he's creating problems. So he suits the system better, because if you say he's better than Lacazette, some people will debate. Oh no, that's not debatable. Oh. Gabriel Undibate. Jesus is better than Lacazette. Oh, chairman. Undebatable. I mean, Lacazette. If you say there. today, Gabriel Jesus is better than Lacazette. Today, Fine. now, and forever. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> but you continue. But I think he's, he's he's really been impressive. I like mm. the way he's he's been able to sink into whatever they are doing, and yeah. it looks like it's it's coming to fruition. Can the players stay fit? Does if they this season we realize they could beat some big teams, but then going into the home stretch, they started losing certain matches. If they can be consistent, I think they can be a real threat for the top four this season. Susu, the just to put, in, uh, put things into context, the highlights came from the Chelsea um, YouTube account. So, they, yeah, they, they streamed the game. Um, at the start of the highlights, you heard the, their commentator saying preseason is all about fitness, issuing a disclaimer because he knew what was going to happen. <laughs> but when you look at this game and you look at Chelsea throughout preseason, yes, it might just be about fitness, but the signs don't look good. Mm. They look very blunt against um, Club America. It took Charlotte. a mixed amount, I think, 30 yarder to win the game. Against Charlotte, the same thing. Scored just one goal, struggled to create opportunities. And then against Arsenal, the blank. It's not looking too good for Chelsea, especially because these are similar problems we saw them face last season. Yeah, the chance creation has always been a problem. So that's not being fixed doesn't surprise me. And the only addition to that forward line as of now is Raheem Sterling. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe mm -hmm. Amandu Broha coming from Lund, but I don't see what he adds in terms of chance creation and goals. He's a very stationary, give me the ball in the box type of striker. And they are not getting the ball in the box. That's why Lukaku was, that's part of Lukaku's issue. He wanted the ball in the box, it wasn't coming. And to be fair to Chelsea, in this match, this one of the few matches they tried to use a back four. And we saw the defence look horribly open. So maybe all Tuchel has learned as this team, the back four is not going to happen. So maybe during the season, they revert back to a back three. They'll look a bit more solid. He was trying to see how it would look maybe against an elite team. It's not looking good. So I don't know what it is going for it, but Tuka has a lot to think about because I was hearing that the plan was to eventually change back to a back four. Now that was the initial plan, but he looked at the score and said they are better suited for a back three. We need to be solid and compact, blah, blah, blah. And now he wants to change to a back four, you know, to be a bit more adventurous, but he still wants that solidity and compactness. And it looks like it's not going to happen for him because from the what we've seen the, the team was too open and 
it didn't help that um, Edward Mendy and Chaloba were misplacing balls from the back in two of the goals. They basically lost possession. Yeah. I won't say needlessly in their own half. You know, yeah. Mendy tried a long ball to no one. It was easily intercepted. Chaloba too tried a pass to no one intercepted. And that's one of the main things right now in world football. You need to be able to play out from the back effectively. And it seems that they were doing it better when they were three. Mm -hmm. So maybe this back four is not good for them because two of those goals were absolutely needless. Mm. I mean, we can talk about how well Arsenal did when they got the ball. We can give them that credit. Mm. But Chelsea also made it easy for them. So yeah. there's a lot for Tommy Taxes to think about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you talk about a team that is struggling to create chances. Let's go to a team that doesn't struggle to create chances. They create chances in abundance. And now they've gone out to buy the most lethal finisher or young finisher. If I say most lethal finisher, some people may talk about um, somebody who's going to Barcelona. But yes, one of the most lethal finishers, arguably, okay, let me put it this way, arguably the most lethal finisher in European football right now, Erling Haaland. And he was on target for Manchester City as they beat Bayern Munich 1 0 in a preseason friendly. Erling Haaland looking good in blue for Manchester City, grabbing his first goal in his first appearance for them. Indication of things to come? Sharp guy. He, he didn't waste like that with Nunes to, to get into the groove of things. First game, first goal. And I think we, we, we both know how it's going to go in the Premier League. It's going to be City, Liverpool, and whoever else wants to join them. But, I mean, look, look at that pass from De Bruyne. If De Bruyne is fit and he's playing, he's going to get chances, and he's going to be a goal threat. So, let's just see how they'll build up into the league. But it's looking like Manchester City, like we know, nothing new. Um, let's go to Manchester United now. Um, last week I was here, I was happy. Um, you see, when you have malaria and you are taking your malaria course, the doctors will tell you to finish it. Because if you don't finish the malaria course, some traces of the uh, uh, parasite will still be in your system. My United faced Aston Villa yesterday. Um, it's been a fantastic preseason so far for United. They scored 4 4 3 in their first three games. Um, they came out against Aston Villa. They played like Eric Ten Hag's team in the first half. They led by two goals to nil. And in the second half, because they've not finished taking their malaria course, they played like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's team in the second half. Aston Villa came back and drew. 2-2. Yeah, so Manchester United drawing 2-2 against Aston Villa. Um, not the sort of result or the second half performance wasn't too good, but it is what it is. That's what preseason is for, to show you where you are slacking and where you need to improve. So Eric Ten Hag and his guys have a lot to work on. Let me read some messages that have come through. Let me start from Twitter. Um, this one is from Nungwa Sholefinio. He says, with what I saw yesterday, I can confidently say that Chelsea is not among the uh, top six next season. Um, this one is coming from obi One Kenobi. He says, uh, Jesus is clearly turning water into wine. Hashtag scorecard. It's a very interesting message. I think you said the same thing. <laughs> um, this one is coming from uh, Abugri Awini Ezekiel. He says, um, anything new for, uh, on Kunde, uh, Kunde to Chelsea? Okay. Uh, Ezekiel watching live from Doma. Chelsea fans are really desperate for signings. Another hijack is about it. really frustrating Chelsea. Yeah, but this, Kunde, this, he's doing like the girl he likes is Barca, but she's not coming. So not coming. coming. <laughs> Just say you wait, wait, I'll come. <laughs> It's very interesting what is going on. <laughs> but I really, I'm really enjoying the rivalry between Chelsea and uh, Chelsea fans and Barca fans on social media. Is, is there two separate, is there yeah, two separate uh, hashtags. Uh, Kunde is blue and Kama Kunde. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. Is there a rivalry? Based because on Barca the news you won, get. Barca have won all four transfers. They said Lewandowski, they put them for their shirts, Photoshop and everything. You know Kama. <laughs> Chelsea, Rafinha. Rafinha. You know Kama. What's the third one? <laughs> It's so interesting. Oh, but I really Even want the Bele to Yeah, aha, the Bele was supposed to come to Chelsea. <laughs> he said he's, 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 he's coming back to his father, Tommy Tactics. <laughs> <laughs> Todd Bowley, what is going on? Your fans are calling. They need signing. So please, I beg, give it to them. This one is from uh, Gustavo. He says, I'm just tired. Oh, interesting. <laughs> he says, he's just tired of how Barcelona keeps hijacking Chelsea transfers. And uh, per the game Chelsea played last night, it's going to be a very difficult season for us. Um, talking about players that Barcelona has stolen from Chelsea, Rafinha signed uh, from Leeds United uh, a couple of weeks ago. He was in action as Barcelona took on their fiercest rivals, Real Madrid, in the USA El Clasico version. Um, Rafinha was on target, yes. Uh, Barcelona won by one goal to nil in a fantastic encounter. I know it's just pre-season, but Barcelona is going to be a problem next season. They are. If, if this is a glimpse of what we are going to see next season, then mm. it's, it's not going to be a one-horse race. It looks like they'll be able to challenge Madrid for the title. And it looks like Madrid, when there's no Benzema, there's, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. Even with all the acquisitions they've had, they seem to l l um, lose a certain 
fire or something of that nature when there's no Benzema. Because from all the highlights, it was it was just Bassa against Kutua. He mm -hmm. was just making all the saves, or either Bassa was missing. So if, if this is the Bassa we are going to see next season, then we really have to watch out for them. Impressed with uh, Rafinha's performance also? Oh, of course. I mean, Rafinha is one of the best players in the world. We yes. said this before. And we, we, I was saying this when Chelsea wanted to buy him. How many right wingers can you say are legitimately better than him? I don't think there's 10 with players who play on the right hand side who are better than him. Fair point. Yeah, he's in that class. So if you get a player like that in your team, it's an automatic upgrade. So it's, it's, not, it's not to be surprised. It's not to be surprising that he's impressing. And I was even saying, I was remarking when we were watching the highlights that he's known for his long shots. Look at the numbers. He consistently scores goals from outside the box. So it's not an added threat to the Barca machine, you know. Mm. I don't think they really have players who shoot that much. I can't think of any of the top of my head who will really have that long range shot in mm. their locker. Maybe Dembele, but he's not accurate. Yeah, so. <laughs> His technique is so <laughs> Exactly. So they don't really have someone like that. Now they've brought Rafinha in. He's direct. He scores goals. And we saw him at Leeds. He was... He was carrying the Leeds team on his back. Now he's playing better quality players. And think of Bamford didn't play most of last season. Now instead of feeding Joe Gelhart or who or Dan James, you are feeding Lewandowski. Things will change. So I'm I'm very excited to see what Rafinha can offer. Interesting stuff. And um, you're watching Scorecard on City TV. My name is Daniel Crankting. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we have some boxing for you. And then we have some chan action for you. The Black Galaxies were in action as the Black Stars B team. They were in action in their Chan qualifier against Benin. We'll show you some action there. And I'll read a number of your messages that have been coming through the WhatsApp line. Don't go away. This is Scorecard on City TV. Welcome back. You're watching Scorecard on City TV. My name is Daniel Cranting. Let me read a number of your messages that have been coming through the WhatsApp line. Um, this one is from... Um, yes. Um, okay, it comes with no name. He says, guys, between Feminio and Gabriel Jesus, who is better? Um, Depends on what you want. Yeah. Mention who is better for you? No, it depends on you. It's a system question. And they are both. I'm, they are both for number nines. Who is better? Who do you have in your team? Me. If I look at AC Milan, I want Jesus. Jesus. Prime for me, no. You see, prime added, he me. added prime. You see, added prime. You added prime to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> prime Daniel Grandi will be better than prime for me. <laughs> Anyway, let me continue. Added me that Femino right now is not, <laughs> it's not Femino. Let me continue reading messages. Roxy from Adringa says, Congratulations to the Black Galaxy for winning their games against, or their game against the Squirrels today. Um, he wants to urge Samobu and his technical team to watch Raza Kasim very well because he has everything hearts were lacking last season after the uh, departure of Ifutu. This one is coming from Alphonse inside Swedish. He says, Please, how far with Kunde to Chelsea? We ask you. Hmm. <laughs> MOB from Amprobi, he says, I don't think Chelsea is ready for the new season. They need better players at two ends of the pitch um, or they will perform miserably this term. This one is coming from Fingers inside Ulebu. He says, uh, Good evening, guys. I'm happy Arsenal won against Chelsea and happy birthday to my dad, Mr. Randy Noah uh, Kuma. Um, <clears throat> this one is from. Okay, no name. Please add your name. Okay, yeah, Prince from Takwa. He says, Chelsea looked. Uh, Chelsea are looking and ready for the new season, uh, but let's not be deceived by Arsenal and Man City's or um, Man United's pre-season form. We've seen some before. Thank you, um, <laughs> Eddie from Malam. He says, uh, "Any news on Jules Kunde to Chelsea?" <laughs> <laughs> My name is Daniel Grant. My name is <laughs> not Fabrizio. You. My name is not Todd Wood. Yeah, he's <laughs> not Fabrizio. <laughs> I'm you. Beg you. They ask you no. Um, <laughs> This one is from uh, Metals from uh, Jumako. He says um, he's looking. He says he's for he's for Grandpa. Who is Grandpa? He says United is. Oh, let me just continue. He says United is rebuilding and Daddy is not rebuilding, um, but he wants uh, what is already cooked, especially looking at his age. Uh, goodbye to the best ever goal scoring machine. When he says Daddy, he's talking about Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> Um, Dominic from OEB, Bush Canteen, he says, I think Thomas Tuchel has been a problem for Chelsea this transfer window. Jules Kunde should have been a signing for Chelsea. Meanwhile, Thomas Tuchel shifted his attention to Matthias De Ligt and uh, somehow, um, and look at what has happened. He's talking about De Ligt moving to Bayern Munich. Um, this one from Clementino, he says, uh, good uh, presentation from you guys this evening. We, the Catalans, will rule the world once again mm -hmm. um, this season. Oh, he says, yeah, this season is looking good with the works of Alemany and um, Juan Laporta. Uh, he says he misses Coach Nuno. He'll come back soon, don't worry. And he's a Forza Barca. Um, 
This one, he intentionally left out his name. He said, hey, master, they chopped me yesterday, but it's just a preseason game. Just preseason, but I put your money on it. <laughs> <laughs> he says, um, this one is from JC from Kumasi. He says, Daniel, good evening. Please tell Arsenal supporters that the performance uh, must reflect in the league. Um, thank you. Looks like this is a Chelsea fan. Um, you to your performance must also reflect. You're going to be taking four nil, four nil. It's not be good for you. Um, <coughs> sorry, um, this one is coming from Kweku. I will not read the rest of your name. Why are you coming and set me up like this? <laughs> Kweku says it's okay. We should stop talking about Chelsea and concentrate on Real Madrid. Um, he's watching us live from a sacrum. Uh, more messages coming through. I'll read them a little later. But let's zoom into the Chan action. Uh, the Black Galaxies or the Black Stars B, they were in action in their first um, Chan qualifier. They faced Benin earlier this afternoon. Blacks, uh, I said, <laughs> so we see Black Stars B. The Black Galaxies, they won that game by three goals to nil. The right. Oseusu's cross. It's a handball and it's a penalty. Penalty for Ghana. 23 minutes. And the Black Galaxies have won a penalty. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's coming down the side where Oseusu and Randolph are operating. Credit to Kasim. He actually dinged that ball to Randolph. Some great composure in domestic games for his club side. Referee whistles, Barnier steps forward, and Barnier scores for Ghana, it's the Black Galaxies one. Imoro Ibrahim's corner, and that's the second goal for Ghana, Mohamed Al Hassan makes it two for the Black Galaxies. The best possible start to the half for Ghana. The corner is not defended, the ball drops into the box and falls kindly for the big centre back who swings a big boot at it and lashes it home for Ghana second and with penalties two things that has caused them today Basiru to Awako magnificent finish from Grass in Awako the Guardian captain would this be the icing on the cake Oh my goodness, what a goal from Awaku. This is an amazing finish indeed. Three hearts of players scoring for the Black Galaxies. And this is the right celebration to go with the goal, I guess. The captain, he's leading by example. What a goal this is. The build-up to the goal is special. It really is. Banya holding up the play. Umar Basiru. Look at that, how he disguises the pass. When Awaku Amak makes the run. And as soon as the ball left his boot, he just knew where it was going to end up. This is glorious. It's picture perfect. Glass Nawaku, take a bow. The quality of the team reflects in the national team. First goal, if free Bani, what team does he play for? So fuck. Second goal, Mo Ahasa, what team does he play for? Hook. Third goal, Glass Nawaku, what team does he play for? Hass of Hook. Hassi, it's a mighty team. Hassi, Levin is a mighty team. Hassi, Levin is a mighty team. Arus, Ar... Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Impressive performance from the lads. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, you can clearly see this. Because of the play, most of the players coming from House of Oak, there's, there's that telepathy between the players. But for me, when Chan teams, the main issue I have with them, there's no, there isn't much continuity. Mm -hmm. Because the league is not that good, everybody, once they shine, they're in a hurry to yeah. leave. So there isn't, you don't build team chemistry for a long time. And that's my only issue with Chan teams. But then from what we've, saw in, we've seen in the highlights, should they get into the tournament, we should expect them to perform well if we give them the right support. Mm -hmm. But this was a very impressive game. Um, they've not qualified since 2015. Um, yes, I was coming to come yeah, to that. So that is, it's, it's, and this start is really important. It's, it's very important. And it's, we have a problem in Ghana. The gap between our league and our national team is very big. We have one of the best national teams in Africa mm -hmm. for years. Yeah. But our league, we couldn't get teams into the group stage of the champion. We couldn't even get one team. Look at, so now we've lost all our qualification places. We have one team, they go and they give us 6-0, then we come home. 6-1. Six 6-1, one. Six one, sorry. We both come <laughs> 
we go to confederations cup they give us yeah. four new like the the quality gap is too big mm. we need to work on that because the north african team they have the national team they have the league we can see there's a you know there's a money aspect to them mm. that kind of stuff but what are we doing to make the most of our limited resources and that's why the chan team can't qualify for the tournament and it's it's embarrassing as a guy because ghana we see we're a mighty football country but our local mm. players they can't beat the other local teams around it's not good enough but this is an encouraging start. Hopefully, we get to the tournament. If I remember correctly, the first one, did we get to the final? Yeah, we yeah. went to the final in 2014. Yeah. Was Libya in the final. Oh, yes. We went to like the semi-final. Yeah. Yeah. In 2009, when the final. Exactly. So, where there, was a, there was some... You could see that something was happening. It's like, we've lost all our progress. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, the league has had its issues. We've not played COVID, the whole number 12, whatever. So, we, are, we need to get back there. But we really need to work on that. We need to fix that. We need to fix it, but 3-0 uh, in the first leg is a very impressive start. Uh, three hearts of four players grabbing the headlines. You saw some of them doing the stand celebrating. Um, top class coach, top class team, reflecting the national team. Let's talk about boxing now. Isodobe was in action. You remember he lost his world title um, a couple of years ago to Emmanuel Navarrete. He's on his road back to getting a world title shot. He defeated Joet Gonzalez by a split decision um, last night. Yes, uh, Bout was also played last or fought last night. And then, um, yes, that was a WBC eliminator. And he sets up another world title um, shot for him. Uh, Ray Vargas is the WBC champion. Um, he's also been targeting the IBF champion. So we wait to see who he goes against. But now he's in pole position to um, get a shot at the world title. The, the, the interesting thing about boxing is that one or two losses can completely throw you out of the, yeah. the race for, for titles like that. And for Dogbe... After the rematch defeat against Imanol Navarrete, it, looked, it didn't look too good. He took some time off boxing. He came back. He fought a couple. But it's, it's really nice to see that he's fought his way back into contention. Oh, yeah. And, you know, boxing is a very crony sport. You know, if they don't like your matter, they, will, they won't give you their chances. So he's lucky that there's people on his side. They are working for him. They are giving him those chances. It's very important because... It's very easy because look at look at Joshua Clotty after his Manny Pacquiao fight. It's almost like the big opportunity stopped coming. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's great to see him still boxing and hopefully we can have another Ghanaian world champion. Because as we've, we were talking about this recently, that boxing is our second sport as a country. So mm -hmm. we need to show. I mean, the football right now is a bit on and off. So let the boxers give us some extra national pride. I, I, I must say, um, although he won... I still have my reservations about the win. Um, Gonzalez is not the best out there. And the fact that he went down to the wire was split decision. On any other scorecards, Gonzalez could have won. And there's, some, there's a lot of improvement Dogby must make if he's going to get that. Um, in fact, going into that world title shot. Because we don't want him to go there and get beaten again. It's, <laughs> it's an opportunity to be two-time world champion. And um, I don't think... We, we've not seen a Ghanaian do that in a while. Yeah, I think... Um, um, yes, Agbeku was, yeah, the, was the last yeah. one to do that. And it would be really nice for, for Dubu to go out and, and get that world title again. I mean, he's, he's trying to climb back to, into title contention. Mm. So I'm sure his team will look at this game, try to correct their mistakes, mm. better his technique and then move for it. Because as you said, we don't want him getting to the final and just getting knocked out or beaten thoroughly. So he, he will need to maybe take a step back, have a real look at his game and then put himself in pole position. But actually, boxing is a very cruel game. You could be there, you lose, and, and then everybody forgets about yeah. you. Very interesting sport. Um, I'm supposed to end there, but I want my producers to do something for me. I want you to listen to the commentator in the Chelsea and Arsenal game. The first thing, when they played it, he issued a disclaimer. And I'm telling you, it came from the Chelsea YouTube channel. They knew they were going to get beaten, so they were issuing a disclaimer. So I beg, just, just play that short insert for me at the beginning. Chelsea versus Arsenal. Quick one, and I'll come in and wrap up. <laughs> you see, it's all he about says, the fitness. It's all about the fitness <laughs> and trying to get in shape. And as he was talking, the brother <laughs> was putting the ball in the back of the net. Thank you for watching Scorecard on City TV. My name is Daniel Cranty. I did this with Susu Graham, any man on Nubo. Thank you for your time. Thanks for your messages. We'll be back same time um, here next week. Keep watching City TV. <laughs>